guys, um, today I've got a special guest, James, um, and we thought as it's Halloween today, um, and I'm posting it today, that we'd do some pumpkin carving. So we've both got our pumpkin carving sets. Bit of a competition, as well as... <laughs> As well as we're going to tell um, some stories, so I'm going to tell some sort of creepy, spooky story, or stories, depends on the time, and you're going to tell... I'm gonna tell a story about me getting freezing cold in a bivouac in the woods, because I'm an idiot. Basically something funny and hilarious. Open our carving, pumpkin carving kits first. Be prepared. Yeah, this is for cutting shapes, so we've got these like cutting shape things like, that you can put into the pumpkin. You've got a little carving knife and another knife. I don't know which knife is for what, and but we've got some knives and then we've got spooky spooper. <laughs> um, I don't know if we're going to use all the shapes, like depends on if we want to or yeah. Um, if we decide to like you know but it's a bit of a competition and you guys get to decide more on who's one or not i've got the normal pumpkin james has got the special pumpkin it's a bit special let's just say so i'm going to tell you a story while we carve i don't know what i'm doing to be quite honest Um, I'm going to tell you a story of when I had to, we're going to be, obviously, sorry, I'm going to quickly stop that, we, it's going to be a bit careful, we're going to have to concentrate on the knives as well as talking to the camera and stuff, so a lot of the time we're not going to look at the camera, so sorry about that, but I'm going to tell you a time when I had to divert um, from going home because someone started following me. So this was when I was about, um, let's just say I was about, I'd say about maybe 12 or 13, something like that, um, maybe 14, I was quite young and then I was come home from school i was heading home from school got on the bus with my friends they all got off at their stops and it seemed today this day i was the only one on the bus um of my out of my friends on this on the last two stops um but as i was on the bus all my friends got off before me and got off on their bus stops and i obviously had to wait for mine um and waited and while i was on the bus there was about this 50 between the ages of 50 or 60 year old man who started trying to talk to me um and started to try and ask me questions about where i lived um my age my house number um what my phone number was what my full name was, my date of birth. He even tried to interact with what school I went in and me being the clever person I am, had covered up my badge of where I went to school. Um, so we couldn't see, obviously he might have seen at some point because he figured it out. Um, I don't know if it was from my reaction or anything, but he figured it out. And I covered it up with the blazer, part of the blazer to cover it up and to show that obviously it was dangerous for him to see and everything. And that's one thing you should definitely do is cover it, try and cover it up or take your blazer off to show off the, not the school badge or whatever. Um, but yeah, I took it off. Well, you know, turned it over. And this man proceeded to keep asking me questions about things, about my family, about me, about my interests, like, but not in like, you know, hey, how are you and stuff, like in a, 
I want to know where you live and kept pressing on me about where where do you live where do you live and I wasn't telling him so there was a bus stop I was meant to get off on and I re I decided not to because he creeped me out so I decided to instead of getting off on that bus stop I'd get off on the next bus stop because I had to otherwise the other bus stop if I had stopped after not got off on the second bus stop um, the third one would have took me into town and I would have had to walk all the way back home and it wouldn't have been as safe and as I got off the bus this man looked at me and he told me before he he was on his way to town and then all of a sudden while I was getting off the bus I was like oh I'm so relieved I've got rid of him and he's not on here with me and everything that he's not there um, thank, thank God that he's not behind me or anything. And then all of a sudden, I saw him in the corner of my walk towards the front of the bus and get off. So he decided all of a sudden to change his plans and get off. And I decided, I was like, this is a bit weird. He's trying to find, figure out my home and I don't feel safe. And I don't know if I was being anxious at this point or because I can be quite an anxious person. I don't know if I was being like really anxious about it for no reason. And it just me just like panicking about it for utterly no reason or anything. Um, and I started walking home, carried on walking home. Um, and then at some point, so let me explain. I got off the bus, the park, there's a park here and the bus stop was here and then you have to cross the road and then the houses like the sh the houses and the streets are on this side so i decided to instead of i didn't want to go in the park because i didn't want to be followed and not many people would see me so i decided to go up and go onto the main street so i crossed the road and started going up the main street and realized he was still following me so I decided to turn around and start walking down the main street again and he'd turned around after me and followed me again and then I decided to, at the crossing there's a little path, there's a big pathway area so I went down there and then started just literally going around the whole neighbourhood, never going anywhere near where I lived, didn't go in the house or anything and I had to, I was doing this for about 10 minutes or longer and he'd like stop, look for me and follow me and smile at me and stuff and I ended up just being like this is creepy and he's an old man following me and like it could have been like anybody just following me home because I live in the same sort of area but he specifically told me that he was going to town told me where he lived and then proceeded to like I would have understood if you followed me a little bit and then went off your own place but like who turns or stops and then turns around and follows you when you've done that wouldn't you want to go that way and like I'd do that where I'd stop or turn or move somewhere else to see where I'd go the areas where I knew people were um and in my head I was like is there people I know that I can go to the houses so I'd go by I knew a lot of people in my community so I'd go by the houses of where I knew people um so just in case I needed safety or to run in I could but at the same time, I didn't want to give their addresses away because some of them had children and stuff. And I didn't want that man to, you know, go around knocking on them doors and trying to ask for me or figure out there's other children there and stuff. So in the end, I found a little, like, hiding spot. No, at first I went into the shop and he followed me in. Sorry. He went, I went into a shop. Are you okay? Yeah, well, at least I finally got the top off. <laughs> I went into a shop and um, just look, walked around there and he, he went, went into the shop with me. So I tried to stay as far away from him as I could. Yeah, you can put that in there. And then I t 
turned out, went away from the shop and then carried on walking. And I kind of started walking really fast and quickly. And I had to find like a little hiding spot. So I ended up having to go down like this little path alley thing that was like covered, but you couldn't be seen. And I like hid away from this man. You don't know all this. What? How long did you hide? For a very long time. For probably approximately like 20 minutes or whatever or longer. About 20 minutes or so because I was so scared. Because I didn't want him to like turn around and follow me and stuff. <laughs> and everything. So I hid for about 20 minutes or so. And thankfully he stopped following me. Um, couldn't find me and everything so I was able to safely go home um, and literally I was so scared that I literally ran ran to my house to get indoors so that I wasn't followed um, and just kind of do what I did public areas go where people are or if you if you're so in danger call the police or tell someone tell someone that's around that you're safe to tell whether that's a woman that's got children so because she might be good if you're too scared to go up to a man or anything like I would be sometimes go up to a woman with children or a group of people and talk to them um, and also just make sure that you never answer the questions also divert from home, don't answer the questions or call call a parent to say, I'm scared, I think somebody's following me, can you help me or anything, just do, be a bit more safe like I was. I'd say just, can I? Yeah. I'd say just call the police if someone's definitely following you yeah. for a while because like you don't have to worry about it, like not being an emergency and stuff, but just explain the situation, they'll send you know, probably one car around or a couple yeah. and they'll, they'll talk to this guy if they spot him and, yeah they will and sort things out and it's not like maybe you give you a lift and stuff yeah you need to feel safe and if you're not and you feel like you're in danger you should talk to somebody call the police definitely and don't just think it's some um, you're just thinking you're just anxious about it that it's just you know you're worrying about it it's not like that it's it might be serious so you just don't know so james do you want to tell us about the story my story is completely different mm -hmm. we have completely different lives it's a very very nice tame story mm -hmm. tame um, so i was on a scout camping trip the campsite not far from where I grew up. And been there before and stuff and normally pitch a tent on the field. It's quite a nice um, sort of field surrounded by forests and stuff. Nice safe area and everything. Um, but one of the activities we had to do this time was to build a bivouac out of you know, dead wood and stuff. Do you want to explain what a bivouac is? Yeah, if to you people don't, that don't know. If you don't know, a bivouac in this context is like a. It's just a. I don't know. Is it like a, a little tent. den? A den yeah, tent a made. A den. Like a den tent. You know, the ones that are like triangle that you sometimes build um, that are made out of wood and stuff and leaves? Yeah. And sometimes you put plastic tarpauling over the top of it. You do sometimes, yeah. That would That's... be a very sensible thing to do, but we weren't allowed to do that. Uh, we weren't allowed to use, we had to use natural, or not natural, just things that are around us, but we weren't allowed to take live wood off of trees. That had to be stuff that's already fallen off. Um, but basically, I wasn't very good at it. Neither was anyone else really. First time I'd done it. And also like was a bit lazy, messed around, 
I've just broken the scooper a bit. Oops. Carry on. <laughs> just messed around. Couldn't be bothered. Didn't want to do it and stuff. I don't really remember. I feel like we're in a group. But also don't remember actually using it with a group. So I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe we were. Um, so the final result is, you know basically just a bunch of sticks and some leaves and lots of gaps <laughs> lots of gaps and uh, we had been camping beforehand so there was a tent on the main field the stuff in it and the stuff in that I brought with me and I got changed into shorts because it was warm in the day and I had a tiny little thin jacket big big mistake and um don't remember the details, but for whatever reason I decided not to bring my stuff across. And then we weren't allowed to leave the woods when it got to a certain time. And the whole it was like a challenge, you gotta stay in the woods. I think we might have been allowed to use the bathroom, but we weren't allowed to go to the tents. Um it was the challenge. Which can I say one thing about that? I think that's a bit ridiculous because you had just shorts so shouldn't they allow you to go well you could but it would like you fall for the challenge i think oh okay i think that would be like the thing because obviously they can't force you to stay in the big wax okay so if they sell you to that would be like weird and wrong so but you do want to forfeit yeah i could have helped myself but anyway so the night comes round and you know it's quite dark. Or maybe I was too scared because of the dark. No, I don't think so. Okay. Doesn't matter. The night comes round and it gets really cold. Uh, really cold. And then also the wind picks up. Should we just remember he's in shorts? And the wind was freezing. And even though we're in the trees, it did not help at all. There was just no protection from the wind. I, when I went to the toilet, I was like, it is barely any windier out here. I think I actually hid out in the toilets for a bit because the toilets were really warm. They were always warm, not like, in that campsite. It wasn't the first time I've been to the toilets and just like, lingered, just like, it's so warm in here. Because they had radiators in the toilet book and stuff. And they'd leave the lights on all night and stuff, so it's kind of nice. A bit spooky getting there. Um, and yeah, so tried to sleep in this bivouac with loads of holes in it, letting all the cold wind in. I'm not even sure I had a sleeping bag. So that was like one of them, like the most horrible nights of my life, really. Just curled up on the ground, like the bare ground, just freezing cold. I think someone let me borrow some, I don't know. I don't know if I managed to get hold of some clothes or something. That I had to put underneath me. Or something, I don't remember. I think you would have like died of coldness. Well, like it, it was like it wasn't cold enough to be dangerous. Yeah. But it just felt so cold. And it was just a long night, like I couldn't sleep properly because it was too cold to sleep. How was it like in the morning when you woke up? If you did go to sleep in the end? It was cold. <laughs> but I was like, thank God. I can actually maybe warm up a bit now. It took me a while to warm up. But I got there in the end. That's my story. Yep. And the moral of the story is um, just think things through if you know you're going to be doing something like sleeping in a cold place. Bring your jackets <laughs> and your trousers. Your I think we're just going to get on with the pumpkin carving to be quite honest. Um, so the camera died part way through recording so I've had to turn to my phone. And James wanted to say something. What was it? How far has the really slow James got? I don't know. Maybe the nose knows. 
but um, I'm going to have to record on my phone and then or I'll come back once he's done and finished and I'll do a reveal of our pumpkins and everything and just see what happens. Sorry about the wobbly quality and if it's a bad quality compared to the camera. It's just a bit annoying that it just decided to die out of nowhere. So I'm going to have to, you know, get charging and everything so i will be back in a second for you bye james we're back james has officially finished his pumpkin so we shall now do a reveal of our pumpkins <laughs> 